Well, Furman fans, welcome to our summer spotlight series. It's our uh, goal to just keep some content out there to catch you up with some alumni and, and what's going on with them and hopefully keep you engaged as we push toward the opening of the 2021, or excuse me, the 2022 football season. And, uh, well, there, there's a guy from a, a Furman standpoint who uh, right now about as hot as it gets, about as big as it gets for a couple of reasons, not the least of which he was just named to the uh, Furman Sports Hall of Fame. He is the current head coach of the Florida Gators, uh, our friend Billy Napier. Billy, how are you, man? Dan, I'm doing great, man. I appreciate uh, the opportunity here to, to spend some time with you. Well, I, I know it was um, uh, a few hoops and red tape we had to jump through to get this done uh, because of your schedule. So for you and Rick, I uh, just can't tell you how how uh, grateful we are that you were um, willing to, to do this. First of all, uh, it, it's been a heck of a year for you, hasn't it? Been a, been a lot of life changes and, and all of them positive, not the least of which uh, where you're now uh, sitting in that office down at the University of Florida. Yeah, no, I mean, just really – humbled um you know to have the opportunity certainly very appreciative of all the people at louisiana um you know any anytime you have success in the game of football so many people contribute to that right mm -hmm. and i think we know that as players but it's even more magnified when you're when you're in the coaching profession so got a lot of people that have helped us get here and um you know it's really uh, pleased with what we were able to do at the University of Louisiana and excited about the challenges that come with this Florida job. Did, did you have a timetable of sorts for your coaching career where you would have expected to have a job at the level you have it now? Uh, and if so, was it accelerated at all? Or, or how did that all play out? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I used to think about being a head coach before 40. I mean, I think those are the things that you think about when you're in your, when you're young and maybe a little bit um, wet behind the ears, a little immature, but you know, I think you get to a certain point in your coaching career and it becomes uh, more about, um, you know, what is the, what is your purpose, right? What is your intention behind coaching? You know, what is your role? Um, you know, we all want to win. You know, and certainly I'm competitive. I love the strategy part. I love the competition part. But I think the people part is what uh, ultimately that's why I'm in the game. And I think keeping people at the core of what we do is essentially why we've had success. Right. So um, I love being a head coach. Um, you know, I love the challenge that comes with the leadership uh, in this position. But, you know, I think that uh, I'm thankful is what I would tell you. You know, everything uh, that I've learned up until this point has allowed me this opportunity. I've been exposed to great people, some of which uh, was at Furman University, truth be known. Now, I was going to ask you how your experience as a player at Furman helped lay the groundwork for where you are now and obviously all the steps in between. Yeah, no, I, I think it, it in a huge way contributed to – who I am as a person, right? I mean, I think the combination of athletics and more importantly, the, the competitive academic environment at the Furman University really shaped my experience. Um, you know, I had to compete at Furman to earn my job. You know, it took like, not until my fourth year was I the starter, um, but I'm, I'm thankful for that experience. I think there's so much to be said for what this game could teach you. Uh, and I learned a lot of, you know, just the, the discipline that's required, the mental toughness, the resiliency, um, and the confidence you get from having to prepare, right, and having to go compete and have success. So Furman uh, shaped me in a lot of different ways. Met my wife there. Um, you know, so much. The, the coaches you play for, the teammates that you uh, sweated with, um, special, special time in my life. I wouldn't be here today without it. So having that experience be what it was, uh, and, and there were a lot of triumphs, there was some adversity, we know that. How special then was it for you to get the call that you've been elected into Furman's Hall of Fame? Well, I mean, the first thing you think about is just uh, 
you know, you played on some great teams. You know, I think individual success in this game is directly related to um, team success. We had phenomenal leadership by our coaching staff. Uh, and certainly on those teams, we had some of the best players in the history of the program, right? So, um, you know, you play quarterback, you, you know, a lot of times when you have success, it's a direct reflection of the players around you playing well. Um, and that's the time of, type of team that we had, right? We were good on offense, defense, and in the kicking game. Um, and, you know, we had an identity. We, we, were, we were tough to deal with. So uh, I'm thankful, you know, and, and humbled by being recognized. Um, you know, because Furman was a special place to me, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of hard work went into that, you know. And I, I'm, brings back a lot of great memories is what I would tell you. Have, have you thought about your speech yet? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm, I'm got a lot of um, grass to mow between now and then. I can promise you that. Um, <laughs> I'm lucky to find 15 minutes to do this podcast here. Yeah, yes, yes, you are. And, and again, we greatly appreciate it. Billy Napier, our guest on our Furman Summer Spotlight Series uh, here via Zoom. So, um, being a quarterback and being a head coach, there are a lot of similarities. Sometimes a quarterback will get too much credit when things go well and too much criticism when things don't. And, and the same thing can be said for a head coach. Have you found that out And now that you have both experiences? Yeah, no, I, I think um, – and you know that going in, right? I mean, it comes with the territory. Um, you know, it's just part of the job. You know, I tell myself all the time, I think – if your standards and expectations, um, they've got to be higher uh, than anyone on the outside. And you've got to view all these things as opportunity. Um, you know, I, and I would say that's probably one of the reasons why uh, our teams have had success is our expectation is, is much higher than anyone on the outside and their opinion, right? So um, if you're a competitor, uh, you know, I think that's the approach that that you take, you know, and, and certainly for me, I've always been very critical self having awareness about, you know, what we could do better. Um, and, you know, four years as a head coach at Louisiana, that, that was a lesson that you learn. And certainly six months into this job, it's no different. So you and I go back to, to the days when I was doing the talk radio show in Clemson. Uh, you, you were a player for, I, I think, the first two or three years I was there, and then your, your coaching career kind of kind of got underway. You, you saw plenty of, of highs, as we talked about at your playing career. You also saw some adversity as a player, and, and you saw some adversity as a coach. Things didn't end the way at Clemson as an assistant coach as you wanted to, but in life, as we know, you often learn, or should learn anyway, the best lessons from adversity and how you bounce back from that. How, how did those moments shape who you are now? Man, I would tell you, um, you know, uh, struggle uh, produces growth, right? And, uh, you know, I think when I look back at my life up until this point, I would say that some of the most difficult things that you go through uh, produce the most growth, right? They, I think that it challenges who you are at the core, uh, makes you take a good look in the mirror, reassess things, recenter things. Um, and I, I would say that about my time as a player, my time as a coach, certainly um, up until this point, right? Even as simple as, you know, maybe you don't get a recruit that you want, whatever the case may be, right? I think the difficult things that you go through in life uh, cause you to reassess things, right? And I think, um, you know, you, as a competitor, you got to go into it knowing that, right? But life's a journey. You know, we use that approach uh, with our teams, right? You're going to have good days and bad days, uh, embracing that. And, um, you know, I think that that's the case in my career. And um, I'm, I'm thankful for the bad times just as much as I am the good times because I think they help you continue to evolve well I, i'm a big believer in in the saying that adversity doesn't build character it reveals it and and, and i think that whether it's in sports or whether in, in it's in life that's true having said that and we've got about four minutes left i'm going to be very respectful of your time we all have these watershed moments 
when was the moment for you when you realized that, yeah, I can be a successful division one college head coach. Was there a, a particular moment? You know, I think that, um, a couple of times in my life that I think really caused me to, uh, you know, make significant change or reboot the computer or whatever the case may be. But, you know, getting let go at Clemson was a challenge. You know, I think, um, you know, in the moment was was tough, but ended up being probably the best thing that's happened to me. Um, you know, at that point, in my career had minimal exposure, had only been around a handful of guys and gave me an opportunity to go to Alabama and work with Coach Saban. And I think that helped me uh, grow as a coach and, and really see things from a different perspective. I probably needed that, you know, in my life at that point. Um, I do also think in 2013, when I was uh, hired back at Alabama as the receivers coach that summer, uh, my dad was diagnosed with ALS. Uh, and that, you know, made 2013 a very difficult year. And, you know, that turn of events really opened my eyes and really created a different approach uh, to coaching. Um, observing my dad go through ALS over a four-year period, they kind of shaped me. You know, I think you uh, – sometimes you uh, – when you go through difficult things there, uh, you don't realize it at the time, but those struggles are going to benefit you and other people in the future, right? I think God's got a way of, you know, maybe maybe putting you through the gauntlet. Uh, you don't understand while it's happening, but down the road, uh, you're able to tell your story and impact other people. So I think that uh, those two events in my life were turning points. Uh, you know, I do think once I was – you know, there at Alabama for four years and, and really had the bug to lead again and call plays and be a coordinator going to Arizona State. Um, that gave me some confidence that I was ready to go and then certainly get the job at Louisiana. You know, was able to go apply all these things that we learned from some of the best in the profession. So uh, those are two things that I look back at and say, hey, those changed me, right? And uh, mm -hmm. Both of those are tough, right? I think sometimes you'd think that th those would be good days that you would talk about, but those are tough uh, environments and scenarios. And I think really caused me to kind of shift gears and change perspectives. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned how God works because I was working on my Sunday school lesson earlier today and, and came across Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. My, for as far as the heavens are, higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts and your thoughts. Sometimes we have to be willing to, to let go. And, and in your position, particularly as a head coach, man, letting go has got to be, got to be a real test of faith sometimes. Well, I think it's a combination of things, you know, I think if, uh, you know, there is a certain human element to what we do, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but there's also, I think, uh, you know, this profession will chew you up and spit you out if you let it, you know, and I think you got to have a good foundation. Um, you know, I think for me, uh, that's my faith, you know, and, and I think um, you know, I've learned that over time. I think it's allowed me to, um, you know, kind of stay centered, you know, uh, and, and really focus on the things that I know uh, are important. You know, I go back to conversations my dad and I used to have about the game of football. We always used to say it's about people, strategy, and competition. And I think we got to keep people at the top of that list all the time. Uh, and if we ever get to thinking we're going to outsmart everybody or outwork everybody, uh, it, you know, it's a good chance that's not going to work. So yeah. I think you can do both. And uh, I'm excited about what we were able to do at Louisiana and really taking that to a different level here at Florida. Uh, you know, really embracing this challenge and looking forward to it. My right, final question for you. Going into your first season as University of Florida head coach, and we know what the expectations are there. You know what you signed up for, right? So, so what's this challenge like? For you, what's it been like so far, and, and, and how are you attacking it moving forward? Well, I, I tell you, it's been a lot of fun. You know, I think uh, probably the biggest challenge is hiring the staff. 
um, you know, putting the puzzle together, you know, uh, really trying to be thorough with that, get it right on the front end. Um, you know, I do think that uh, this is the first year that there's been kind of turnover with the portal being active, uh, mm -hmm. with the NIL being a factor uh, in recruiting. So there's some evolution there, especially when you're, you know, trying to, you know, recreate, rebuild a program here um, that's had success, um, but, and is hungry to have it again, right? So I think that's exactly where we're at, right? We've got history and tradition here. It's been a while, um, you know, and, and we've got a lot of work to do to get it back there. But, you know, I think for the most part, I've been very pleased uh, with my experience. You know, I think uh, this is a place that has an incredible product to sell. We've got great people. Um, you know, the hiring piece, the portal, the NIL, those are things that are new. There's no manual for those right now. But uh, overall, um, it's what I expected, right? And I think these are the kind of jobs that you want, ones that have high expectations that have done things in the past and want to do things in the future. So um, one day at a time, one person at a time, you know, that's the approach we're taking and certainly so far so good. Well, I know I speak for the entire Furman fan base when, when I say we wish you nothing but the best of luck. Congratulations on, on reaching what many would say is the pinnacle in your profession and, and also on the, uh, uh, election to the Furman University Hall of Fame. Just can't wait to see how things work out for you. And, and again, for you and, and for Rick, uh, it, getting this lined up. Thank you so much for your time today. All right, Dan. Thank you, man. All right. That is Billy Napier. This is the Furman Summer Spotlight. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll have another one for you coming up soon.